Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2010, it's a Honda Accord. We're going to be changing front and rear brakes as well as the rotors in the front and rear at the same time. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do a step by step. Uh, we're going to change the, uh, the, the caliper mounting hardware also where the brake pads fit into so that way everything slides back and forth nice and easy the way it's supposed to. All right, so uh, we're going to do the fronts first, and then we're going to go to the back, and we'll do the back. The back is a little more difficult. You do need a tool to actually turn the piston back into the bore. Uh, different ways of doing it. You can do it one. You can do it with a pair of needle nose um, pliers like this. You can put it into the back of the piston and rotate it in. It is a pain in the ass to do. You, you, you got to be real careful. You don't stab yourself. Uh, but they do make a special tool. I'm going to bring you over. I'm going to show you what tools are actually needed, and uh, enough talking, let's get in there and let's get started. All right, here's an example of what you're going to need to do this job. You're going to need obviously a hammer, a file, a couple of wrenches, I use an impact driver, you can use a piece of brass or you can use a metal drift to, to knock the bolts loose that actually hold the, uh, the rotors to the car itself. You're going to need a set of sockets, but in reality I think you need like a 17 and maybe a 14 or a 13 millimeter socket, that's it. Uh, a ratchet of course with a long extension type, uh, with a longer ratchet gives you a little more leverage, uh, a pry bar to push the pistons back in in the front, some type of a sanding device to clean up the rust on the, uh, on the hubs or, or a scraper, a tool like this to recess the piston back into the bore if you have this kind. You can use a C-clamp also, do the same thing. Uh, and this is the tool I was telling you about to push that piston back in. This goes into the back of the, uh, the, the caliper and then you turn it in with this tool here. So, uh, all right, let's get up there, let's get started. And uh, enough said. All right, let's get started. Okay, now what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and these screws right here, we're going to hit these with the brass drift to try to break these loose a little bit because they can be extremely tight. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here with a, with a pry bar like this, and we're going to get in the back and we're going to pry the uh, piston back into the bore. So, uh, all right, let me get started and... Uh, We'll continue with it. Alright, first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit this right here pretty firmly. really pretty firmly with this brass drift to loosen these up. So you just put your brass on here or anything you have. You can put it on here and just hit it. And you can use something like this also if you wanted to. And what I use is a driver. Once I hit it like that to get it out, I put this on here, I just put it on. I'm going to step in front of you for a second here. They can be extremely tight. Don't lose these because you're going to need to put these back in later. Remember I said about prying that piston back in all the way? Bring in and show you. What you got to do is get in here with a small pry bar like this and you just keep some pressure on it.
and it starts to pull in very slowly. You don't have to kill it, just keep constant pressure. If you can get it in all the way, great. If you can't, no big deal. We could do something with that later. Now, you also want to make sure these slide pins right here are sliding the way they're supposed to. And you can tell because you slide it back and forth and it slides nice and easy, see? So those sliders are working properly. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out this bolt here. It's probably a 14 millimeter. Same thing up here. And then we're going to remove these bolts down in the back here and one on the bottom to take off this mounting bracket right here. You don't want to lose these bolts because you're going to need these to put it back together. Okay, now we're going to take the caliper and we're going to hang it off to the side, like this, just to get it out of your way. And you don't want to let it hang by the hose, you always want to, you want to uh, support it. We're going to take off these little clips right here. These are spreader clips, very important. We're going to put these off to the side for now too. And now we're going to take the caliper off, I'm sorry, the caliper mounting bracket. Take out those bolts in the back. They were 17 millimeters. Just so you know, it can be pretty tight, as you can see. Now, before you take the bolt all the way out, break the top bolt loose too. Makes it a lot easier trying to take it out instead of having the whole bracket moving around while you're trying to break it loose. Again, you know, don't lose those, you're going to need them. Now we're just going to put the caliper mounting bracket to the side for now. We'll come back to this shortly. Take our rotor off. As you can see, it is stuck. This one, it doesn't matter, we're getting rid of it anyway, so you can tap it with a hammer to knock it off. Before you put your new rotor back on, you have to clean the face up right here. Different ways of doing it. You can clean it up with a disc like this. You can clean it up with a razor blade or a scraper. Whatever you have, you have to make sure that this face is clean. So let me clean this up and then we'll come right back. Okay, now I just want to point this out. Before you put the rotor back on, spray it with some, uh, some brake cleaner and then wipe it down just to get all that oil that's on there when they ship it you know while it's in the warehouse so it doesn't rust okay, put this back on. we're going to put these two screws back in that we previously took out
You don't have to make them real tight. You can just make them as tight as you can by hand. I mean, with a, with a screwdriver, of course. I'm just going to tap it in here with this. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to show you. We're going to change the hardware right here. I hope you can see it okay. We're going to take our brake pad out. Same thing here. And then we're going to take out these pieces here. This is the mounting hardware kit. Now, I just want to show you this. If this is rusty, a significant amount of rust on here, you can clean it up with a file, you can clean it up with sandpaper, you can use anything you, you want to. This is pretty clean, so we're not going to worry about it. A little dab of grease right here. And the way you put the new one back in is you just put it on here like this. Okay, make sure your clip is here and here, and make sure that these little clips go in there all the way. Take this one here off. Again, check here, make sure it's nice and clean. This one's clean, we're not going to worry about it. A little bit of grease, like that. Put our new clip back on, and make sure your, your tabs are caught the way it's supposed to be here and here. All right. Next thing we're going to do is take out these slider pins here. We checked them before to make sure that they were working. Take it out. Get it lubricated and put it right back in the same hole that you took it out of. Same thing here, like this. And now when you put it back in there, you'll see everything slides nice and freely. Same thing here, nice and freely. All right? Now, you have two options. Well, let me just go forward here first. Every place that the brake pad touches, you want to lubricate, just like that. Okay? So now it'll slide nice and freely. Now, this is the old brake pad. This is the new brake pad. You see how this indicator is in the same location? You have to make sure you put it on like that. The other one has the indicator on this side here, so make sure you put the correct pad in the right spot. As you can see, this one was the inner brake pad because that's where the piston was touching, so this goes on the inside, which is right here. I'm going to put that in place now. Okay. Now what I was going to tell you is you have an option. You can put the brake pad, the outer pad in here, or you can put the outer pad in once it's on the car, whatever works for you. Either way, it's still okay. This. Make sure you, your um, your hardware kit is in all the way. As you can see, sometimes here it's a little bit of a pain in the rear end. Like that, and now we're going to put this back on the car. Attach the bolts in the back to 17 millimeters. 
and before you tighten them, you catch both of the 17 millimeters in, and then you can tighten it up. Hold your brake pad so they don't fall out, and then tighten that bolt. Same thing on the upper. Okay. Let me change my gloves and I'm going to bring you in from a different angle so you can see what I do with these clips right here. This can be a little bit of a pain in the rear end, so I'm going to bring you in a different angle so you can watch me do it. Let me just change my gloves. Bring my tools in here. Okay. Now, we'll take our caliper. And we gotta make sure that this piston is pushed in all the way, which is still has a little bit further to go, so we're gonna push that back in. Take out this brake pad for a second. We're going to put it up in here. And now we're going to push the brake pads into the caliper and we're going to push the piston all the way back in. in where it came out. That's what I mean about either way. You can do it before or after, whatever works for you. Okay. Now these things can be a pain in the rear end because when you put them in here and you try to tighten them, the brake pads pop out of the holder. The caliper or mounting bracket, I should say. So you have to put it in and hold it with your fingers like this so that they don't come flying out. because now this, these brake pads are just naturally going to push open. Right? So you're holding it with your hand, you take your caliper, and you bring your caliper over the top, like that. That's why it's so important to make sure that piston's pushed back in all the way. Push this in, and you can put the caliper back in. And now you can put in both of your bolts. All right, and then we're going to tighten up the caliper to the mounting bracket. Now, I just want to point this out to you. If you're trying to tighten this, and this won't tighten up, you could hold this in here with, I think it's a 17 or an 18 millimeter, maybe even a 19 millimeter wrench. You could hold this so it doesn't rotate. But we didn't need it in this case. We're in good shape. So, uh, all right, let me bring you in there. I'm going to show you uh, one more time what we did. Okay, first thing we did is we made sure our rotor went back on with those screws, tightened them in. We cleaned up the face where the rotor fits on. We put our new hardware in. We lubricated every place that the brake pad is going to touch. We made sure our bolts are tight here and here. And we also made sure that the bolts in the back here and down there are both tight. That's it. And of course, to make sure that our spreader clips are still in position, that they didn't pop out. And that's it, we're all set. All right, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side, and then we'll go to the back and continue in the back. Okay, now obviously we're in the back of the car. 
We are going to do the exact same thing we did up in the front with these screws right here. We're going to hit them with the brass drift, and then we're going to use that, uh, that driver to get these screws out. The only thing that's different back here is that this has its parking brake assembly built into the caliper, so you can't push these pistons back in right here. With these, this we have to do differently. We're going to take out these two screws, this one and this one, and we're going to lay this off to the side, and then we have a special tool that we use to push that piston back in, but I will show you that when we get to it. All right, so for now, what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up this rotor right here, just like we did the front one, and then we'll continue with the, uh, with the back over here. Okay, we're going to put the drift on there, the brass on there, brass or metal, whatever you have. Don't worry about hitting it too hard, you're not going to damage it. And we'll put our driver on it and we'll see how it does. Sometimes they're a real pain in the rear end, and sometimes they break. It can be a pain, in the, a pain in, the rear, in the rear end. Even for me, I've been doing this forever. And even for me, sometimes they're a pain. But just hit it a couple of times with that brass, and it breaks the, uh, the rust loose on the threads here, as well as on the collar right here. Don't lose them. You're going to need to put them back on. And we're going to take out those bolts in the back that we previously talked about. Loosen them both before you take it out. Before you take the bolt all the way out, loosen them. And then we take these out. Don't lose them because you're going to need to use these over. Just going to take this off to the side. This one you can't hang it with a hanger because it's just the way it's situated. This clip here we take off these spreader clips. We're going to replace these with new ones. And we'll take the brake pad out just to. Make sure our sliders are good. They bolt slide. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out this bolt and this bolt. I think they were 17 millimeter. Now the bottom one is a little bit rough. I'm sorry, the top one is a little bit rough just because the uh, the ball joint is there. The uh, caught it in. So we're just going to break it loose first. Now you can use a ratchet, you can use a 17 millimeter wrench, whatever works for you. We're not going to take it totally out, we're just going to loosen it right now. And then we're going to come down to the bottom and do the same thing on the bottom bolt. Once you have them loose enough that you can turn them by hand, we're going to turn them by hand. Now, I want to point this out to you. When you remove this, there's little tiny, uh, like a washer inside here. Don't lose it. 
So take this out by hand first. I mean, it'll, it may fall out. If it does, just watch where it goes. Take that out. Same thing on the bottom here. Don't lose out, we're going to need it again. I know I say that all the time, don't I? Okay, take your caliper bracket off, put it to the side for now. I don't know if you can see it, but right here and right here, there's a washer up against this right here. Don't lose them. If they fall off, no big deal. Just pick them up and we can use them again. We're going to knock this rotor off because we're not using it over again, we're replacing it. So. We're just going to lift this here up out of our way. We're going to hit that a couple times right there. Remember what I told you about those washes? That's why I say be careful. One of them still here. This is the one here that fell off. So we'll put that back on later. But we're going to do the same thing like we did up in the front. We're going to clean this face up right here. And once we clean this up, then we'll, uh, we'll come right back. Okay, once we have that cleaned up, then we can put our rotor back on and put the screws in to hold it in place. I just want to point this out. I did clean this rotor off with brake cleaner, just so you know. Okay, nice and tight. I'll just tap it on there a little bit. Remember, this fell off. We gotta put that back in there. So what I normally do, just put a little bit of grease on it. And you stick it back in there and it'll stay without falling back out. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, actually let me change my gloves and we'll come right back. Okay. Take our brake pad out. And these clips right here, we just take these clips right out. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not. Take it out like this. Same thing here. Now, I just want to point this out too. If there's a significant amount of rust inside here, you need to clean it out. This one doesn't have much rust on it. It just has a little bit of dirt, which I'm going to push off like that. You need to sand it down just a little bit with a file or sandpaper or whatever. But overall, this one is in good shape. So, you put a little bit of grease here and here. And then we're going to take our new bracket, and we're going to put the new brackets on. Put it on. And you push it all the way in. Just like that. Same thing on this one. Like this. And that's it all the way too. All right, now we're going to pull these pins right here, and we're going to lubricate these. 
keep them in the same spot they came out of. A little bit of grease here. A little bit of grease here. And we'll push it back in. And now, as you can see, they slide nice and freely. All right? Next thing is, every place that the brake pad is going to touch, you grease it. Right? And now we're going to take this and we're going to mount it back in the car. And then I'm going to show you how to use this tool to recess that piston back in. So, uh, all right, let's get back by the car. brake pad here. I'm going to put this inner brake pad in because it's sometimes a little tough to get in there and do it. So we're going to put this brake pad in here where it belongs, like this. And now we're going to put this back in the car. This one we're going to put in later on. Now, you know what? Let's put it in right now. Now we'll take our mounting bracket and slide it back in here. Make sure that those two pieces didn't pop off those washers. Okay, you made sure your washers didn't pop off now. Then you put those bolts in and screw them in as far as you can by hand. And then once you've got them in as far as you can by hand, you can tighten it up with the ratchet. Now we're going to tighten them down. Now, this is what it's telling you about up here, how it doesn't fit because of the ball joint. That's why you need a little extension, or you just use that 17 millimeter wrench. And then we'll tighten this up. Okay, now. Caliper is mounted on. We squeeze our brake pads together. We lubricated everything up here already. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this piston here back in. And the way you do that, I grab my tool. It's with this tool here. You see, this fits into these little tiny holes right here. It fits right into there. Now, if you don't have it, don't worry. Don't freak out. You can rent it at the parts store, or you can get in here with a pair of needle nose pliers like this and you'll be able to rotate it to push it in. I'm not gonna do it because it's a pain in the rear end and I stab myself all the time. But in a pinch, you had to do it, you could. All right, we'll put the tool in here. Line up those little, those little teeth right there with the caliper piston. Get the set and I'll show you how it works. See? Like that. And you just grab your wrench and you turn this. I don't know if you can see it, but you can turn the piston back in then.
that piston needs to be almost all the way in. This is why I said doing it with the needle nose is a pain in the ass. Oh, pain in the rear end, I'm sorry. With this tool it just makes it so much easier. And you'll know when you're in all the way because it doesn't go any further. And then we'll take that tool off. And now I'm going to show you how they actually are. These need to be straight this way across from, from front to rear. That's actually off just a little bit. But I'll show you with ply is what you can do. You can turn it back so that it's, it's actually straight even with this opening right here. All right, now, that we're going to leave right there for now. Okay, remember these two clips I told you about? Well, actually, there was one clip before, but there is supposed to be two. One had broken off. They go into the hole up on the top of the brake pad here. These are spreader clips, so that when you take your foot off the brake pedal, the brake pads pull away from the rotor, and it doesn't drag. All right, so you put these back in there where they belong, in the holes. It is a little bit of a pain in the rear end, so have patience. Put your clips in like this, and then once you have your clips in place, take your rotor, I mean your caliper, put it over the top like this, push your piston, your sliders back in, and it goes right into position like that. And you catch your screws that hold the uh, caliper to the mounting bracket. A little bit awkward for me working in this position because I'm normally where you are, right where this camera is, where I stand. It's a little easier. All right, now we'll tighten up these. Now I'm going to point this out to you too. If by well, let me tighten this one. I'll show you. If by chance you're trying to tighten these bolts up here, and this is spinning here and here, and it's not tightening up, you just hold this with a wrench. It's probably like a 15 or a 16 millimeter. That's not the case with this one, but it does happen. All right, nice and tight. Okay, that's it. Let me just go over exactly what we did. Okay. All right, first thing we did, we took our rotor off, obviously. We cleaned up every place that the rotor touches against. We cleaned up the rust. We put the rotor back on. We cleaned the face of the rotor with brake cleaner, as well as the back. We put these two screws back in. We mounted up our, hard, our mounting bracket. We put new hardware in. We lubricated everywhere that the brake pad goes. We lubricated the slide pin so that they slide properly. We made sure that up underneath here, that that little washer didn't fall out underneath there, as well as up on top up in there too. Very, very important. We tightened up the bolts in the back there and we tightened up these bolts and that's it. We're all done. All right, next thing we're going to do, we're going to go on the other side and we're going to do the exact same procedure on the other side and then we're going to take it out and road test it. All right, uh, before you drive it, step on the brake about a dozen times to reset the pistons in here and then you'll be all set. All right, if you have any questions or any comments or you need any advice, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.